And now I'd like to introduce two very special guests. Starting with Morgan. This is Morgan's first time uh, with me on stage. Uh, not the first time attending these events. And uh, just to briefly introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Morgan. I, I use pronouns he, him, his. I'm transmasculine. I'm a relationship anarchist, and I play chess and do a lot of art. And now uh, I'm going to briefly introduce Janet, and she can introduce herself more thoroughly. Uh, my first experience with Janet was the written word. I read The Ethical Slut, I believe, in 2009, and um, really changed a lot of my life and made me seek out more literature written by other authors. And, and not only that, I'm still learning from her. Uh, just being Facebook friends, we learn a lot. Um, I learn a lot. And um, I'm just so honored, I'm so proud to be on stage with you today. Thank you. Um, I'm Janet. I came down from Eugene, Oregon, which is where I live now. Uh, I've been poly since slightly before the end of my first marriage, which unfortunately was the end of the first marriage. Um, but uh, the first edition of The Ethical Slut came out in 1997, and we had no idea what we were, what we were turning loose on the world. Uh, at, at the time of the first publication, there was very little public awareness of poly as an option. We usually had to explain the word polyamory when it came up. Um, and we just sort of rode that wave. The book has become tremendously important to a great many people and it makes us hugely grateful. When I say we, I'm talking about my co-author, Dossie Easton. We've done five books together and quite a few separately. Um, of which Ethical Slut outsells all the rest put together by a margin of about three. Um, so, so that's me. I'm, I am bisexual, genderqueer, uh, no longer sexually active, which is a whole other story for a whole other time. Um, and I live with my equally bisexual and genderqueer spouse in Eugene. Just to get things started with questions, and then I'm going to open it to the floor, I'd love for you to talk about your most recent books, because Ethical Slut is only the beginning. Um, the two most recent, well, one that just came last month uh, is called Spanking for Lovers, because spanking always has been, always will be my core kink, and I blush to say that I'm really damn good at it, <laughs> and also really good, really damn good at receiving it, or was before my back went. Um, and it's actually an updated edition of an older book called The Complete Spanker, but it has a bunch of new information in it. And then the one before that is a memoir called Girl Fag, A Life Told in Sex and Musicals that is about my strange gender life, which I, I recently interviewed a, a trans therapist who said, you know, you've met one trans person, you've met one. <laughs> and I love it. A lot. Um, so that it's, it's about my strange little corner of the gender universe. I'm currently uh, looking for a publisher for my second memoir, which is called Impervious Chronicles of a Semi-Retired Deviant, that is uh, more about my BDSM life. Um, so that's, that's what I got going right now. And I'm embarrassed to say I've read nothing besides The Ethical Slut, and I need to catch up. I will catch up. I have read interviews with you, which I absolutely loved and has started amazing conversations, and now we're going to have one. So does anyone have any questions to start? I, I know there were hands before, Is you, or were you one of them? Great. Um, how much do you think uh, folks who end up enjoying and having successful rewarding experiences with sex with other folks uh, end up having to Oh, that's a, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, I think those of us who are poly, we come from every walk of life. I'd, I'd say one of the things we all have in common is a low boredom threshold. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't think anybody is born naturally good at poly. Um, if, you ha if you're in a relationship with one person, that requires a great many communication skills, um, and if you're in a relationship with two, square that, and if you're in a re relationship with three, cube that, and it goes up kind of expo exponentially, so it can be very demanding. 
do you think? Um, I would agree that it can get really demanding. I think doing poly well is probably a skill and experience thing. I think being inclined to try poly in the first place is probably more innate. Uh, it's probably, like you said, that, that low threshold, the novelty seeking that, that drives me to continually like look for new things because new things are still exciting. Um, I've heard some people tell me that it's just because I'm young, and I wonder if you can tell me if it's... <laughs> 61, 61 and counting. <laughs> it's, I think it's yeah. related. I, I think definitely I, I would probably seek more partners that now than I'd be like novelty seeking in 50 years, but who knows? Um, can I say that when I have gone to swingers events, there's not many young people. No, there. so swingers, it's called the Republican vice. They tend, they tend to be older, older people and often politically more conservative. 40s, 50s, 60s yeah. is the norm. Yeah. So at least with non-monogamy, I think that's total horseshit that it's about being young. Yeah. No, it's one of those things, the, the, the same sort of thing that people say about bisexuality. It's a, it's a phrase, a phase, you'll, you'll get over it. And you know, here I am, 61, not over it yet. Um. I don't know though, I'll keep trying. <laughs> Well, you just have to keep doing it until you feel full up. Um. <laughs> I, I tell you, when people talk about the complexity and the demands of being non-monogamous and, and how it gets exponentially harder, for me, nothing is, harder than mo no, uh, uh, nothing is harder than monogamy. That's the hardest thing in the world for me. I struggle like crazy. It's, uh, I just don't have the skills to repress myself to do that because I am not... Was I born this way? Is I raised this way? I don't know, but I can't. So nothing's harder than monogamy for me. That's actually a really good point because you talk about the, the complexity of the communication going up, whereas for me, like every encounter seems to be equally complex. I just have a lot of them with a lot more different people than other people bother to. Um, there are just more people. I feel like the complexity level that I'm engaging in, maybe I'm an unskilled communicator, but I, I tend to do like the same level of communication with almost everybody and the same level of honesty. Um, but relationship anarchy is, again, a little different than poly. Okay. Oh, now I've totally forgotten what I was going to say. Um, oh, uh, to me, the, the complexity, that's not a have to, that's a get to. That, that's, okay. Part of what I like about it is leading this busy, complex life in which I interact with a lot of different people and learn from them and, and have them learn from me and, and grow together. That's, that's not a burden at all. It's like saying it's horrible having a lot of friends. That's yeah. an awful thing. <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, go, go. Well, well, how about you define it? Because I think you're better qualified at that. One th I've been sitting there over at my little table, sitting on my hands for a couple of hours because um, Polly these days, all, the whole world of alternative relationships and alternative sex is so fond of taxonomizing. We have to have everything in its little box and a different name for each box. And it makes me fucking crazy. It truly does. Um, how do you know which of your relationships are the ones where they're sexual and which aren't? How, you know, if you've ever gone to a Tantra class, put your hand on someone's chest and breathe together and come, you get a pretty clear idea that you do not have a goddamn idea where sex begins and ends. What are you going to do? Make an agreement? I'm not going to breathe with anybody but you, honey. Uh, it's, it's, um, like, you know, I've done scenes, you know, I travel around, I'm often speaking at leather conferences, sometimes I'm doing demos, and I do a scene with someone that if I'm lucky I might get to have breakfast with them the next morning, but I'll never see them again. But it feels like love while it's happening. If the scene's any good, that's love. So I, I think this whole business of even trying to sort monogamy apart from poly, and then certainly all the little subcategories we have of I'm polyamorous, but she's polyfuckerous, and he's poly... <laughs> <laughs> I, 
mono, what, what was the one? Monoamory. Monoamory, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, it all is based on a kind of binary thinking that gets more difficult with, for me the more I talk about it. <laughs>